Welcome back, everybody, to EGF Collegiate Rocket League. I am Dito Taco, and joined with me is Vincent. We are back after a somewhat brief break. Sometimes you need to catch your breath after the last series, and we figured 45 minutes or so would be adequate. So up next, we do have Quinnipiac University against Siena College. Vincent, how are you feeling about this one? You know, I was going on a run, so that's why it took me a little bit longer to catch my <laughs> breath. But I'm course, feeling course. good. I, I, I think that this should be an interesting one. I, I had the opportunity of uh, uh, taking a watch, actually, of uh, Quinnipiac just a, both last week and the week before. So I have had a lot of experience with these guys uh, for the last couple of weeks. And I think that they're they're putting on a bit of a show here in the, the back half of things in the spring split. So I, I'm really, really excited to see what they can put on uh, against uh, Siena College. And without uh, further ado, we actually all have them in the lobby, which is fairly crucial to be able to put these games on. So I'm glad these people are willing to oblige us. But kicking off early, we will have uh, these two squads going in. And Sienna, actually one of the more interesting squads because they are a fully console team. Uh, they don't have any player currently on the field right now that is a PC gamer. So always a interesting, you know, that's such a player base that gets so much prejudice within the PC gaming world. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes a little bit of a uh, of the prejudice, but but hey, listen, console gamers are real gamers too. That's what we like to see. Certainly so, and they're trying to prove something here, but they'll try going for a little air dribble down the middle. Not going to work out. Grubcat trying to harass things up field for Quinnipiac, but they're more than content just staying back. This is a fairly deep rotation they've taken, and uh, right now it feels like this might just be a game one where they're trying to not make any too costly mistakes, maybe just play a little bit more passive, see where things take them, because uh, both teams uh, not going to, for too many infield passes, not going for anything too risky. They're kind of just hitting the ball upfield for right now. Yeah, and, and getting a little bit um, stuck in rotations, like grouping up a little bit too much, getting in each other's way a little bit, I think, on both sides of the ball um, here for, for either team. So maybe a little bit, you know, first game, uh, you're you're just trying to warm up your, yourself just a little bit, and, and then you move back forward um, here here early on. And there's a technically attempted pass, but actually six is up for this one before anyone else, and it gets past everyone except the bar off the framework and will be rejected. So first, a real foray into the attacking third for Sienna. And they're gonna get stifled, but here comes another one who's also six in Grubcat. Not gonna be able to get this one and they're on the board. Yeah, that's just a bit of an unfortunate position, right? We saw Guapo Chapo just trying to do something with that ball and then off the deflection, able to find that. His six is doing incredible work there, making things easy making them look simple there for sienna as they move forward now with up one goal but still three minutes and 15 seconds left to play so lots to be able to do here quinnipiac certainly can bring this back yeah it's definitely not out of the question but demos don't help along the cause quinnipiac has uh one of the players sent to the shadow realm but he actually spawns back in and he's gonna get there first off the corner he'll be able to get it down to another teammate smig it's it in the middle. Guapo Chapo is there, but will be rejected. And six, yet again, always in the play. We'll be able to clear that one out temporarily. So good attempt by Quinnipiac, and they might even get something off this one. It's just a sitter in front of the box, but Guapo again denied. Sienna just holding on. They're going to have to hold on for at least one more, but six will get the clear. So uh, Quinnipiac showing some signs of life here later on. Definitely, but you got to you gotta convert on those types of opportunities, right? Like, that was a wide open net available to you, and, and you just unfortunately weren't able to convert. That's something that you need to see being taken. And in a game where the, the scoring is so low at the moment, you, you really have to take those opportunities when they're given because they're few and far between. And certainly so in six. They'll take those opportunities when they're given a second goal for himself and for the team, but can't really say this is too conventional. The high lob all the way down. Yeah, I mean, that, that was just, I, I think, a little bit unfortunate there for the Quinnipiac side. Yes, they, they ended up hitting it in, but it was in the attempt to make the save, just weren't able to quite get the angle on it. And Sixes came away with a bit of a lucky goal there, all things considered. But, hey, you take those and you take these. as That's one coming out there for Banos, who gets it off of pretty much the rip, just off the side of the wall and an easy lob. Yeah, I love that play, too, because it's a high lob and it doesn't seem like too dangerous. But knowing that they just go headhunter mode and track down that last defender, bump him out of the way. 
and get a what seems like an easy goal, but definitely well earned as Sienna might actually be in the hunt for a fourth, but this one, XCon, can't quite read that one. Binos gets up for that and that will be turned away just wide. But uh, Quinnipiac, when they were very much in this game, now they're starting to really fall out of it as Sienna has woken up. And at this point with two minutes remaining, they still have time to come back from three, but I don't know about four though. I mean, where, where are these rotations? Like, I mean, I, I'm just asking so many questions right here. Who's back for this ball? Like, Grubcat, I guess, supposed to be. But Grubcat was up, up for it as well. So I I don't know who was supposed to be back there, but I think just a, a big mistake right there in those rotations, not really having anybody available to, ro to rotate back around and get the net. And so that does open up opportunities like we just saw. Oh. Well, unfortunately, we may have lost a taco. I know. We talk about first game jitters, but the so I actually muted my mic, take a sip of water, and I never unmuted it, which is oh. classic error. But um, right as, as just as I muted my mic to calm things down and then unmuted it, we're back in action. And Sienna, once they got their scoring started, they're actually not able to really stop at this point. And I don't think Quinnipiac has much to really say to them in response, which is uh, a bit of a struggle, but to be honest, in game one, I don't like to put too much stock on that simply because there is so much more series to play. And even now, though, they can't even get one on the board just going just wide of the Sienna goal. Yeah, and, and you just have to, to hit those on target. A couple of, uh, of off-target shots right there from the Quinnipiac side, really just needing to, to hit those on target and, and make those opportunities um, into into victories, into goals. Not something we've been seeing thus far, but I think I'm on board with you right there, Danger Taco. You, you can't take too much away from a game number one because there's always a whole lot more to play in a best of five. So. Make sure, you know, make, making sure that, yeah, 20 seconds left, four goals down. It's not really looking all that doable, but certainly, definitely not out of things are Quinnipiac in this series. Certainly not, but maybe try and just get one for the road, build some confidence, and they'll try with one more touch forward. But Six closes the door on that one and might actually be able to put his own stamp on this series. The <laughs> lob will be denied, but the victory will not. Sienna comes away with game one. And a nice victory as well. There for Sienna, they they had a couple of opening goals, right? That that really looked solid. Um, but then, all things considered, they they started running away with things when a couple of key mistakes from Quinnipiac opened up a, a free net, and uh, those rotation issues that we were talking about uh, from the Quinnipiac side really biting them uh, in the behind. Or, or later on in, in, in game number one, we see six uh, ha having a great game, two goals uh, and five shots. So it, you're going to have to try and shut six down a little bit if you really want to see this uh, this best of five look, uh, look closer. Yeah, I, I feel as though that beginning where we saw both teams play a little bit passive, the moment Sienna started playing more direct and started playing more aggressive, Quinnipiac wasn't really matching that intensity. And I feel like in Rocket League, when one team picks up the aggressive, uh, nature, you better play very solid defense or else you're going to get left in the dust. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, it just wasn't really there for Quinnipiac in that first game. So going into that game number two, ideally, they're going to realize, oh, we actually do need to pick it up, pick up the speed. And more importantly, get some shots on target because they were getting shots off, but so many were just going just wide off the post or they were just too weak. And ultimately, the game ends 4-0. You had eight different shots and you couldn't find the target once. So that's definitely something that needs to be amended. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something I see in all all sorts of esports titles. Um, and, and I think it very much applies here. The the team that plays uh, the fastest usually comes out victorious unless you're playing against a team that, that really knows how to punish over aggression. And mm -hmm. and right now that's clearly coming off and that's what your your overall point was. So I, I think I'm fully on board with what you were saying there. Quinnipiac needing to pick up this pace just a little bit in order to make this a much closer series here in game number two. Now we're going to be seeing Quinnipiac actually get some early pressure, though. Guapo will be able to beat Defender to that. No Defender touch on that. Grubcat off the back wall. Guapo the half rotation, and just Ooh. like that, 16 seconds in, they have their first lead of the series. Yeah, I mean, this is just exactly what we were talking about. Early aggression, they come in, uh, three opportunities right here at the, the rip, and you make one of them work. It doesn't matter if you have if you convert all of your opportunities, but if you have three in 15 seconds, surely you get one of them in. And not to rest on the laurels, they know that game one wasn't the prettiest sight, so trying to 
avoid maybe a repeat of that or at least letting Sienna out too much in their half. Some nice pressure coming in, but six downfield. They don't get a touch, but they will be able to follow it well. Good oh. flick over. That's a great pass. It's a better save, but it still somehow crawls in before Guapo can recover. I mean, look at this pinch there in the corner. We just watched it, and then it's all up to the the Banos uh, sitting there, ready and waiting in the wings. Uh, it's a little bit sloppy, but yeah, a goal is a goal. It doesn't really matter. But that pinch in the corner was oh, so beautiful. It's a nice little uh, dink of a pass there, just to get it over that last defender. And glad to see that working out for Sienna. But I can't really say Guinnipiac feels the same getting that quickly and then giving it up even quicker. Oh, and they no. might actually be giving up this equal score line just wide open down the field. I mean, just look at this commitment here. You got all three Quinnipiac players on the left side here on the replay. Nobody at all anywhere close to trying to play back in towards the midfield, back in towards their own net. And Well, that's a mistake that gets punished every single time. A very long clear goes the opposite direction, and it happens to be on target. That was one of those, and unfortunately, Quinnipiac lose out off the back of that net another time. This one, not really a bad rotation, simply a great play. As we see, look at this double bounce right straight up the wall over the top of any defenders and Banos is there to clean things up that's good reaction from six there they hit the ball kind of awkwardly they land a little bit awkwardly but then get a nice touch into the middle and three players all in the same corner for Quinnipiac and none of them able to get any of the touch that's just not going to work out and dunks continue to put pressure under almost getting another opportunity is Sienna but they will relent just for now as Smiggy coming down, tries to demo everyone out of the way, but no result coming on that one. And Sienna will be able to take it down the field with Six's air dribble, but we'll just roll into the corners. So Knipiak going to be able to breathe for at least oh. a second or so, I thought. Just a ball right across the middle and Vino scores. Capo, Chapo, this is such a dangerous ball. This is why it's so tough trying to play across the middle in front of your own net. You just shouldn't do it. That's a great example of why that's such a dangerous play there for Guapo Chapo and something that is, is so difficult to contend with if somebody's ready and waiting there to take advantage. Yeah, it, Rocket League often gets compared to soccer since it's putting a ball into the net. It's also compared to hockey because of the movement being more free flow and the positioning is more abstract at times. But that one is very much a cardinal sin of soccer. You do not yeah. want to pass that ball too lightly across your own goal especially on defense and Sienna College doing a very good job of doing what all great teams do, punishing mistakes when they do crop up and they're not letting off the pressure even for a second as they continue to lob stuff off of the backboard and continue to chase things down and Gripiak looking a lot similar to game number one here, just struggling to get out of their half. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been doing better here in game two and well, that might be a good opportunity, but somebody is able to get back there. Um, but doing a lot better here. Game number two, right? They're, they're definitely giving themselves options, opportunities to, to make adjustments, but it, it's really just not been all that effective with the amount of mistakes that we've been seeing come out. And, and again, I, I'll say it again. I, I say it all the time here at Danger Taco is that the team that makes the least amount of mistakes is typically the team going to come out victorious. Certainly so, and the team that is executing better will most likely be the victor. It goes uh, certainly both ways, but at the same time, you never want those going in the same direction. Right now, it seems like Quinnipiac making a fair amount of mistakes, and Sienna is very happy to be able to punish all of them. So right now, Quinnipiac has two minutes to be able to avoid going down to match point here. And the way the Sienna is playing, it's just such a dismal prediction as they put in a fifth. Yeah, this is, I mean, look at this, just the steal, right? Off the bounce, uh, able to get the angle over into the uh, side of the net. And I, I mean, it's just a good play right there from Sticks. I, I don't even think that it was necessarily a huge mistake there from Quinnipiac, but you, you have to you have to imagine that, that they're feeling good here. Sienna up 5-1 right now, minute 55 left on the clock. And I mean, it's game two, but yeah, they, they are looking indomitable at this point. Now a little bit of ping pong in midfield will come out to Grubcat. It's a nice pass in the middle. Swingy just can't quite get on it. Guapa's gonna have to wait back for the clear. So they will be able to keep pressure into the corner, but a tough challenge not quite being able to put on target is six. Marching downfield again, throws one into a little bit of awkward space. Vinos following up to keep things lively and some more action in the quarter. And Sienna has repeatedly gone to that back, uh, I guess back left blue corner. 
uh, time and time again, and it really feels like the difficulties in getting that ball out are becoming more and more apparent to Sienna as they keep going back to that well. Well, I mean, look at why, right? The, the reason that that's so difficult is that there's one player making a solo play in that corner, right? Two players ready and waiting in the wings to, to take advantage of the clear whenever it comes back onto the right side. And that's just what they're doing. They're just waiting. It's passed back to the the defense of, uh, of Sienna, and then they, they feed it right in for another opportunity. It's just a, a really vicious cycle right now for Quinnipiac that they've got to figure out a way to break out of. Breaking out of is the operative term there as some more midfield pressure coming in and working to great success from Sienna, burning off a lot of time here. And now we're getting back to essentially our sentiments at the end of game one, where this might just be in Quinnipiac's best interest charts to try to get something else on the board here, just to give them some confidence, because certainly they have to be looking towards game three at this point. Another rejected shot and Guapo has one go off target. This is 3v1 at <laughs> Quinnipiac. Still can't quite get it in. There you and go. Finally, they'll get a second, but that really encapsulates the entire vibe that Quinnipiac's been uh, playing offense with this whole night so far. Yeah, I, you know, I hate to agree with that statement just because it's a little brutal, but you're right. I mean, it really is. That, that's where they've been at, having to pretty much take advantage of a three-on-one and, and barely able to bring it across the finish line in that scenario. So, uh, you know, we just need to see some adjustments here for Knipiak as, as the time rolls down. And I think the thing that speaks to me the most about this game is I think I'm being hard on Quinnipiac not because they're outmatched. It's really just the execution. They're, they're, they're right in this game, and then they just have this flurry of snowballed errors that Stan is capitalizing on. And that's really the difference in the series. And I, I feel like it's not a, not necessarily a difficult fix. I mean, in the moment, I'm sure it's very hard to mentally adjust and, yeah. you know, step up your play, but they're really like right there. And then it just like slips away from them, it seems. I think what you're getting down to is it's not as if there's a huge skill diff or anything. It, yeah. It's quite literally, we've seen Quinnipiac play this game. We've seen them play it um, up to this level. We know they can do it. We're just not quite seeing it today on on the on the moment in the server, and 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 it's something that the both of us were, were thinking. Okay, well, well, if only they can they can turn that around to the Quinnipiac Quinnipi that we've seen before. This is a very close series. So I, I and I still believe that. I think you know down two games certainly makes this difficult, right? But they definitely can make those adjustments. It's just a matter of, of if they'll be able to. And well, that's certainly a way to start it out, making balls with a incredible kickoff goal just straight down the middle and nobody is home as he chips it over the head of the sole defender and yeah, that nice little speed flip off of there where the boost never is facing backwards always forward crucial skill at every level but especially here for collegiate rockley and now we're seeing a game two hopefully not a complete repeat but at least it is somewhat of a reboot of how they began last game they got a nice early goal uh, uh showing wow. off that mechanic and they might actually be able to get another one but smiggy not able to get on the end of that aerial and now six really man of this series for sienna charges down but that time will be pushed to the side well, and look at how Grubcat was, was ready and waiting that time. Had the rotation in. There's a good adjustment. Something we haven't necessarily been seeing right there from Quinnipiac throughout. And here we go. Yet another opportunity to score. This one a little bit wide, though. And it's a good way to get back from Sienna. They just be able to get enough on it or at least to make the player, I guess I guess you could say hear the footsteps. It's always tough using uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of <laughs> metaphor and uh, kind of sayings from other sports. Doesn't really apply here, but certainly the defensive pressure getting to Quinnipiac a little bit as they're able to uh, get the better of Sienna here in the beginning. They're getting some good touches here as another one comes out from Guapo straight down, barely a save, Grubcat gets denied. And you can't say the goal line defense of Sienna hasn't been <laughs> fantastic oh. all series long, but the counter attacks have also been top notch. Man, that, I, I almost don't even, I'm not even unhappy with Quinnipiac, make, you know, triple committing there because that was such a good center ball from Guapo Chapo, by the way. Like, what an incredible center. Um, but you're not able to take advantage of it because there's three players sitting ready and waiting and you, you get a little bit overcommitted and, and that's what happens. Speaking of overcommitted, though, that's an overcommitment from Sienna to put Quinnipiac right back on top. It doesn't seem like it would be a moment that you'd be your most vulnerable, but kickoffs very much are. You're at your lowest boost. You have to go out of the middle um, on low boost to get more. And at the end of the day, sometimes if you take a weak kickoff, the other team might be able to punish you. And that's too straight now. Quinnipiac has been able 
to capitalize on. I, I would just love to see them get something in the more traditional run of play, like really Sienna has been able to. Another one comes in right off that demo on the defender. Yeah, that demo is very unfortunate, right? That's that's exactly the player who was making a play on the ball, and then Guapo Chapo. I don't know if they were out of boost or what, but was just not in a position to try and defend that shot at that angle. And here we are, tied back up once more. But this third game has been a much closer affair, and in a very great showing here for Quinnipiac in comparison to what we've seen in the last two. And Guapo Chapo just creeping out a little bit too far on the near post, and they can't adjust to this follow-up hit, uh, but. Binos, time and time again, really, uh, Binos, I would say, and Six are more than capable strikers for this Sienna squad. They've uh, constantly be in the mix, and I love that sense of predator instinct they do have. It seems like they're always in the play offensively, and it's uh, certainly making life very difficult for Quinnipiac as they're just giving up a bunch of touches, but they can't let him get cocky. Smiggy actually robs them of another one. Yeah, that was uh, a bit of an interesting back and forth there at the beginning. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Six is always ready and waiting, ready and looking for something. As now another good opportunity here off the back of that 150-50 over in mid. But nothing doing once more. The, this has been solid from the Sienna side of, of controlling the ball in their side of, of the half. They, there's just been that, those one second opportunities that Quinnipiac have had to punch the ball in. And right there, great pass in the middle, and that one will be put away. Another equalizer as this series has swung back and forth, but we're not even at halftime, and this is looking to shape up to be quite the high-scoring affair. Well, and, and, and like what I was just saying, right? Doing good, controlling the ball, a bit of a missed pass. That's what allowed for Quinnipiac to go in there, was ready and waiting. You talked about sixes, who's been ready and waiting, but that time I, I, it was Grubcat, if I'm not mistaken, doing doing that uh, that ready and waiting maneuver to, to sit there and, and look for an opportunity. Now I see a little bit of a deflection here, and another one right out the middle, Grubcat. They're not going to miss that one, and there is the lead back for Quinnipiac. I mean, I'm just not even going to let you do any play-by-play -play here because they <laughs> score so fast. This is back and forth the affair. Grubcat, another right place, right time. Great pass there from the outside and able to convert. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that this play is moving. I'll, I'll gladly stay silent for the rest of the series at <laughs> the rate these goals are flying in. As I mentioned, we just hit halftime and we're seeing a lot more goals come in. And then right at the stroke of halftime, they're able to put another one in. So... Certainly, Santa's not going to be too happy with this one. They are on match point, so all they need to do is win this last game, and they can get out of here, uh, hopefully, with uh, a nice, clean 3-0 sweep. But Grippiak is starting to call that claim into question, Ooh. but Guapo gets too aggressive, but I touches it too far, and I can't really say Grippiak uh, is not anything else but just sheer luck right there as they get away with that one, and we'll save another shot coming forward from Venus. I mean, unfortunately, Ive McFallen falls flat on their face on that one, hitting the outside goal post. But you know what? It's okay. Still a one goal game here with a minute 30 left. It certainly is up in the air. Now it's back down on the ground with Grubcat as they flick over one. They might have to be able to get another oh. one, and they will. The deflection. Last defender couldn't handle it. And that's, I believe, the first two goal lead that Quinnipiac's seen. I mean, yeah, realistically, the first lead that they've really seen is in this game, and now they've pulled it up to two. A nice deflection, great shot, really great job there just to put it on target, right? And nobody was able to make a play on the ball. That Those are the types of goals that it's just playing, playing correctly and then walking it in when you get a lucky deflection like that. Now they're just trying to keep pressure on the ball as Grubcat will try chase that one down, but... Ultimately, the ball will be back in Sienna's possession here. Guapo with the backflip, a little bit of a precarious touch there, but he'll be able to get that one to the sideline. And Guapo back out in the middle. Six cuts that one out. Is going to fall. It will Ooh. not off the bar. Uh, McFallen puts that off the bar again. Binos gets deflected. And now with a minute left, Sienna starting to get stifled here. And Guapo on a fast break trying to put one in. But we'll have to leave that for Grubcat, a high lob. And on the follow, we'll be able to drop that past a couple defenders. Smiggy, they'll slot this one, and certainly Quinnipiac has been able to answer back in this game. And and this just goes to show you what we were talking about in, in the in the mid game right there between two and three. 
We were talking about how both of us both expected and know Quinnipiac have better plays in them. This is what we were expecting to see. This is the Quinnipiac that we know is there, that we just weren't seeing in game one and game two, and, and they're finally showing up, and they're showing up big time here with this three-goal lead. Yeah, and this is really all the confidence that I would like them to play with because at the end of the day, it wasn't even that you need a banger, like 90 mile an hour shot on target. You just need to put something on target. You just need a couple of confidence goals. Just make sure you're placing it at least somewhat dangerously and results will come. And we're certainly warmed up to the series now. And at this point, it's looking like Sienna is the one that's running a little bit haggard, a little bit more frantic on defense. They're really struggling to keep out some of these shots as Smiggy doesn't put that one in, but still a lot of uh, cars kind of running back and forth on Sienna, just trying to stave off the offense. And they certainly haven't been able to this game as this one will fall and at least not be a clean sweep quite yet. No, 2-1 now. The score line there is Quinnipiac clean up the game 3-6-3 three, to three as well. And look at the shot totals right there. Pretty similar. Eight shots there for Quinnipiac, where it's nine for Sienna. But on target, goals very much more. And and, and I want to add as well that, you know, on top of just getting those goals on target, you know, just hitting a shot on target like you were talking about gives you the opportunity to really get those lucky goals you know lucky is is maybe the wrong term but um where we where we saw the deflection off of banos we saw a couple of deflection goals actually in that one like as long as you're making the plays putting putting it on target in general like that's not bad at all and and you give yourselves opportunities to get those goals even if there's a defender in the way yeah, and I think there's an element of luck to some goals, but there's also a lot of goals that you create your own luck. If you throw the ball into a dangerous area, sure, it takes a weird deflection, but it wouldn't have happened unless you were able to keep that pressure and yeah. keep that defense trying to just improvise on the fly. And sometimes it's very hard to do that. And sometimes it'll result in a nice deflection. So when it be at getting their nice six goals, I'm hoping that they keep this mentality because I would love to see a game five out of it. I think they've deserved it after the performance in that last game but right here there's just no one and six is going to keep up his performance of just smacking a goal every time he gets one i mean six pretty much did this one all by themselves really stepping up that chip shot beautiful nobody had enough boost to really make a play on it and there was like three players on the way i, I have to imagine that there was a a part of that that was like we can't even see the ball coming uh did quinnipiac so that's just a nice job, well placed from sixes to to step that up, and it's a goal lead here for Sienna. Something they didn't really have a whole lot of there in game number three. Now the long hit again, and that's going to be another one for six. As Quinnipiac just getting a little bit too far upfield, and again something that's plagued them earlier in the series, just no one back to prevent arguably the simplest thing in the Rocket League meta, just a long shot on target. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I, has been a problem here for Kronipiak throughout these games is is the lack of, of that player back, the triple commitments downfield. It was working out beautifully when we were seeing the goals scored, but when it doesn't work out, you, you know, you get punished for it pretty, pretty profusely. And Sienna also subbing out one of their players as XCon Crazy comes in for I've Been Fallen. So uh, that was a lineup that had gotten them some nice results. So I'm curious to see if they're going to be able to return to a uh, level of form that we saw earlier in the series as they're actually rotating very deeply on that one. But this time will work out for now, a deflection to the corner. And so far, Sienna is looking pretty strong, but they are leaving some gaps. Smiggy takes advantage of that, puts a shot on. Grub just tapping it on Tari, but not fast enough. And another opportunity might have been able to be converted, but Winnipeg still uh, definitely very much in this despite that scoreline. Smiggy's been very good defensively on this half thus far. That was a big stop that we saw uh, right before that opportunity for Quinnipiac. So uh, something to look out for, but certainly something else is uh, this goal pulling up, making the plays. Uh, it's the 1v1, and, well, you just got to beat one player. Just demo them. Easy. I mean, why not? If they're in your way, then get them out of your way. And then just yeah. try to smack, <laughs> them, them. smack them around there. And uh, demo meta, I mean, not something we really have seen too much, but obviously such a brutal way uh, as a defender, you try to position yourself perfectly. You think, oh, there's no way to get it uh, through me. And they don't have to get it through you if you're just not there. So certainly Sienna being able to use that to its full effectiveness. And they're very much back to their full effectiveness. A 3-0 lead here for in the first two minutes. 
And Quidipiac try as they might, not find the target quite yet. Guapo will be set up one and teed off, will be able to drive it into the net. Well, this is a great example of where this triple commitment from Quinnipiac works out wonders, right? They just have so many players going for this shot. Not everybody can be defended, and eventually somebody misses there defensively, running out of, of the boost and everything else. So, you, you gotta you gotta understand that that this this play from Quinnipiac is sometimes I would consider it an all or nothing type play. The problem is that y you gotta limit those all type plays a little bit more. Yeah, certainly so. And if you're just a little bit more cautious, you might feel like you're losing out on offense, but at least you're not giving up huge gaps in the back as Venus just barely turns that one away. And we'll be able to clear that out to XCon on the sideline, who will follow it up with six. But now with a two on one, what can Smiggy do with this? Venus taps that into the middle. Grubcat trying to slow things down, though he will be able to take it past six and maybe even get something more on it. Pass in the middle, but no one is there. Now, uh, Quinnipiac, it's kind of like they're in between here. Sometimes they're a little too far forward at that one, a little bit too far back. It feels like they're so close to getting that sweet spot at times, but not quite there. And they only have two minutes to really amend these uh, defensive or rather rotational errors uh, before they're really going to pay the ultimate price for it with this series. Yeah, it's, it's really about those rotations. It's really about trying to find that sweet spot. And Quinnipiac, they, they had it in game three, right? But it's been lacking here uh, in game four. And, well, maybe maybe an option there. But Six says no thanks. Gets the demo and makes that very much an easy uh, recovery. But another open net available. Like, it's just so many times where I'm just looking at this Danger Taco. I'm just like, man, imagine if there's just somebody there ready to take advantage of that position. It would have been so incredible. Yeah, but unfortunately, they're repeatedly not able to get on that. And this time, they'll try to march down again, but this time with an aerial play, Grubcat, they don't get this one. Guapo gets that. It's a good 50. It's still sitting there, but the long clear. Is that one going to find the target? Grubcat, make sure that answer is no. But XCon, keeping it dangerous, goes for the Doomsie. No touch. Grubcat, no touch on the clear, though. So... Six, another lob over the defense, but another one going to go just wide. So, Quinnipiac survives another one. The long ball down, a little too eager, and they'll just hit it into that last defender. Under a minute to go. Does Quinnipiac have it in them to find that game three type finishing? It's going to be tough. It is possible, though, with 40 seconds left and playing around midfield. Another pot, but again, blocked by a well placed uh, player just sitting ready and waiting in the goal. Certainly unfortunate, but a lot of open space now as Six is trying to torment the defender. He's not leaving him alone, and neither save with the ball as they get another deflection out. A couple off the post, but creative shots coming in. Ultimately, it's doing nothing much more than burning time, but that's the really the one thing that Quimpiak just does not have as all the balls just flying around left, right in their half are burning down really the only currency they have left. They can't get any more in, and it seems as though Sienna is going to be taking this series. Yeah, and it, it just seems as if it was just a matter of time there with the amount of ball control that Sienna was holding in this game. Um, you know, game four, just not really Quinnipiacs in this situation. So uh, another great great showing there from Sienna. Had the sub come in. Uh, that was XCon crazy, and XCon had a good game, I have to say. You know, if you look at the score, you wouldn't necessarily know that, just sitting at 254, but had some key uh, key moments there in the midfield, key times that was able to get back, you know, didn't get credit for, for the save or anything, but was the sole defender left ready and waiting to uh, to defend the ball. So uh, something that, that Sienna did well there and, and adjusted to was Quinnipiac's kind of all-or-nothing style that worked so well in Game 3 was shut down with ease in game four i think game three was quinnipiac being aggressive but not over pushing it and i think in games one two and four it just kept coming back to bite them it's like kicking a bad habit it's so it's so easy to just fall back into those habits and i felt like they were doing very well at times but at the end of the day it just felt like skinna was kind of just biding their time they're like ah don't worry something will open up and then the field just clears like the red sea parts and then you have quinnipiac leaving the goal open and at, at a certain number of times you can only allow that so many times until you're giving up enough goals where you can't take back that lead you can't fight your way back and i think uh Knipiak is very much something that i wouldn't count them out if i had to redo predictions for this series i'd probably still pick them to be very close in it and be able to take the series the distance uh but at the end of the day sienna just playing very solid and 
just a lights out finishing across the board of pretty much every game. Yeah, that's that's kind of the the story across that board is the lights out finish, the uh, well played midfield battle that Sienna was putting on, um, and and you know it was very much trying a journey of trying to tone back the all out aggression that Quinnipiac wanted to do with with what is reason reasonable and realistic here um, in, in a game where you have to be key and, and concise on your rotations, not giving up too much. So. Um, nonetheless, yeah, Quinnipiac just falling a little bit short there, 3-1 ultimately uh, in the series. But uh, commiserations, they did play a good game, and Sienna College doing a, uh, a wonderful job stepping things up there, Danger Taco. Certainly so, and they'll take that series, and that'll be the first series of our tenure tonight. So we'll be throwing you guys to a brief break as we come back with our second series of the, I guess, uh, Vincent and I. But uh, we'll see if we can maybe grab a player for an interview from the Sienna side, but if mm. not, then we will try to get you back with Niagara University and UT Arlington. Welcome back, everybody. And we are sitting down after that nice series. Sienna taking it over at Quinnipiac. We have uh, one of the talisman of that attack, Six, in the call with us. Uh, Six, how are you feeling after that last series? Uh, good. I'm happy that we got the win because we we don't win a lot, but I'm glad when we get one and I feel good about it. And it's always fun when we win. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good time, right? Um, uh, you were, I, I w want to say, a crucial part of that victory, having a, a couple of key goals, a couple of uh, of key assists as well, really setting up the ball. Uh, so 
one, one thing that we had noticed when when we were watching was that you were always kind of ready and waiting in the wings for for an opportunity for a, a spot to just punch it in and or uh, play off the wall. Your wall play was incredible. Is that something you you actively practice a lot and, and work on to to be one of the the big parts of your game? Uh, yeah, I think wall play is really important because it's like the higher ranks, like that's what you have to be good at. You have to like hit off the smooth wall, stuff like that, and just like be ready for when your opponents hit the ball, basically. So that's why you just like wait and be in position, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You gotta, you gotta make sure you're in position to make those plays, and, and once you are there, you can convert. So to follow that up, I, I will say that um, there was that that game three, right? What what happened? Quinnipiac coming out six to three. Ultimately, the scoreline really smacked you guys around there in that game three in a way that honestly it just didn't look look like they they were anywhere close to that in the rest of the series. W was that something on y'all's part that you think that y'all were? you know messing up or or having a struggle with or, or did they make an adjustment that you guys had to think about um i'd say they definitely did make a little bit of an adjustment they played good like each of the top guys on their team i think they each had three goals so mm -hmm. they did pretty good that game and like it was pretty close throughout we like we just like i'd say we just got um like we just scored our chances and they didn't have like that much offense but that game they scored a lot of their chances basically i, I think and there wasn't really much on our part. Yeah, so when you get in situations like that, I'm always curious because you guys are playing very fast. So I assume you guys are in comms with each other and, you know, keeping communication up. What do the comms get like in games like that? Is it is it more frustrating? Is, are you trying to keep your like eyes forward? Like, OK, let's focus on the next game. Um, how, do you, how do you guys cope with uh, frustrating matches like that game three? Uh, yeah, we we do like to look forward to the next game, especially like in that type of situation because we it was 6-3 and by the end by like the last minute of the game we were focusing on the next game and getting ready for that but like we were two nothing up so like we were pretty confident that we could win another game and i'd say the comms like we don't we we don't we definitely don't get like really frustrated we just we just keep our cool usually most of the time because like it's not because like doing that will not be um a cooperative team effort if we just like got frustrated with each other so we just always try to stay calm and just you know like that certainly so and it's good to hear it because uh certainly paying dividends because you guys were able to pull out that win so uh thanks for coming in and uh chat with us vincent you got anything uh more for the man uh no last thing is is really more just hey you have anybody you want to shout out any anybody want to say hello to before we let you go uh i'd like to shout out I'd like to shout out Binos, who is my teammate, and also I'll shout out Soccer Scout, who is on Fairfield, just All because right. I know him and we're friends, but that is really it. Cool. Well, shout out to you all, and uh, well, thank you so much, Six, for taking the time to do a quick interview with us. We really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Well, I appreciate I it. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, we are going to take a short little break here whilst we get the next matchup prepared. So don't go anywhere. We've got some more Rocket League action coming right at you.